Yep. He told me to go live. Up there, I had to set it down. of the Lord forever I will sing. Sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make known my faithfulness, my faithfulness. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of just to be having the time of fellowship, Lord, underneath your blue skies, on top of your green grass, and you're such a good God to give us all these things. Lord, thank you for the life that we have. Most of all, thank you for eternal life. I pray, God, that we would use the life that you have given us that remains here on this earth to be fruitful for you in your name, by your power. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's sing some more here. You can sit there.
in the Lord with our humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Let's pray, we'll get into the lesson. Father, we love you, thankful for your grace. Lord, it's, it's about you, it's about your work, it's about your word. And Lord, we pray that you help us to glean from your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so, I titled this real quickly, I, I promise not to be lying, The Work of the Church. The Work of the Church. You understand, I, I did not, I, I, thought, I thought I heard that Brother Fowler was coming, I didn't know that. Pastor Fowler uh, and Pastor McFarland were going to be here, and and uh, and of course Pastor Curley's up up here. We have four preachers in this crowd tonight. So, uh, and, and to my mind, there's nobody I'd rather hang around than the people of God. Okay, Christian fellowship is a blessing. It is something that has been lacking since this whole COVID lockdown. And I got to tell you. We grew a little bit from it in that we adopted to the technology. We are we're live, even right now, we are live streaming what we're doing right here. We're live streaming, but we've been live streaming the services. Uh, we've been on Facebook, we've been on YouTube, we've adapted our website to accommodate all of that. We, uh, uh, we've got a Twitter account, but not a Twitter account, an Instagram account that we're using. Uh, we've just had to make adapt for such a time as this. However, i got to tell you, the, for, at the beginning of this thing, it was just me and one other, our family and one other couple in the church, and I hated it. I absolutely, positively hated it. I missed the fellowship of God's people. I mean, bottom line, I missed the fellowship of God's people. And i got to tell you, I'm just... I, where's, where's Brother Tony and Miss Marilyn? I am so grateful for their hospitality Amen. in opening up their yeah, that's property. Right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm so grateful for their hospitality in, open, in opening up their property. And I am so thankful that we have today the fellowship of God's people. Now, here's the thing. I guess we've got four preachers here, but you got to understand, all of that is to say, the men of God who are here understand the church is not here solely for the purpose of having fellowship and having barbecues. Now, I like having fellowship and I like having barbecues. By the way, Tony, you did a great job cooking burgers. Okay. All right, Miss Marilyn, the chicken was outstanding. Okay. All right, so, but, you know, it's not about barbecues and fellowship, I mean, it's it is still about the work of the church. Amen. And if we look at it from that perspective, we go in our text, and it says in our text, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. First mission of the church is to evangelize the lost. That's right. the very first. The mission of the church is mission. Our goal is to bring Jesus Christ to the people, to see Jesus Christ saved, to see lives changed, to see people glorified. You sound good, brother. You, 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 to see just, people glorified for the glory and honor of Jesus Christ. The work of the church is to evangelize the lost. Amen. It ought to be our goal. It ought to be our focus. Listen, if Jesus Christ came to seek and to save, that which is lost, and he bought the church. We are a blood-bought Christian. We are a blood-bought church. He bought the church with his own blood. Then shouldn't we do the work of the church and come while he come, do what he came to do and win the lost unto him? Amen. We must evangelize the lost. That's the work of the church. Amen. 
Then the second thing regarding the work of the church is this. We are to enlighten our converts. We are to enlighten our converts. Verse 28 says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with, our own, with his own blood. You understand? We ought to want to see people saved. It is the first mission of the church. But the Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, Go, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Amen. Well, the all things is what we got in the Bible. Yes. What we've got in the Word of God. So once we get them saved, we ought to get them baptized, we ought to get them in the church, and we ought to teach them what God has for their lives. And the fact of the matter is, God, God has blessings for their lives. God has a purpose for their lives. God has a ministry for them to participate in. There is not one Christian, not one, who is useless to God. Right. Amen. Amen. Every one of us has value. Yes. Every one of us can learn. Brother Crilly said in the message this morning, you go ahead and you find a verse you want to memorize and you just repeat it 20 times a day for a week and you're going to know that verse. There's nobody who can't memorize some scripture. There's nobody who can't learn the word of God. There's nobody who can't be blessed by the word of God. Amen. So the work of the church is number one to evangelize the lost but then to enlighten our converts. Number three would be this. We, can, we are to encourage the trouble. We are to encourage the trouble. Verse 35 of Acts chapter 20 says this. It says, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. We ought to encourage the trouble. You understand, there are people who are hurt. We've been, our, our church has been blessed. I don't know how we ended up in this situation, but about once every, once a month, once every three weeks, we get a phone call. We've got food for you. Would you come pick up food? Last time we got cases and cases of apples and oranges, and we got uh, uh, cabbage, and we got, and, and we've gotten, cookies and uh, we've got uh, rice and we've got we got turkey we've got we've got so much deli turkey wow. if anybody needs sliced turkey like you want to put on sandwiches come see me we God's just given us this ministry of food okay not something we ever really sought out God gave it to us so we've taken it and we've run with it and about once a month we find ourselves at the church just packing up tons of groceries We 
are, the mission of the church, the work of the church, is to evangelize the lost. It's to enlighten our converts, and it's to encourage the troubled and wait. Next, we are to enlist the unenlisted. We are to enlist the unenlisted. Verse 35 says this. It says, uh, verse 35, let me see. Let me make sure I got my text right here. I want to, yeah, we are to, in the same verse, we are to enlist the unenlisted. To remember the words of the Lord Jesus, uh, 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 rather, so I'm sorry, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak. In other words, listen, this is something for you to do. Ye ought to support the weak. In other words, you have a role in the work of the church. Uh, you, know, you get people, and especially when you're a young church, most of the people in your church are going to have very little to no experience with the Word of God when they walk through the door. They're not going to have much. It's not like taking a church that has been around 100 years where you, everybody walks in and, you know, they all think they know better than the preacher. Been there. <laughs> all right? And, and most of the people in, in our, the churches that are here, uh, Brother McFarland is, uh, uh, three year, is, is about three years old, right? Yeah. Um, Brother Filer, how long you Brother Filer, how long you been in Peru? About five. About five? We're five. We're baby churches. All of us. We're baby churches. That means. So it should not be uh, it should not be a surprise when people come to our church and they don't have any knowledge. Uh, a whole lot of Bible knowledge. You know what the best thing about that is? We get to train them. They don't come in with any preconceived notion, but we help them to understand that there is a work to be done. And we help them to understand that they can be part of something that is bigger than themselves. Well, what can they do? I don't care what they do. They can do something. Yeah, CJ got back from college this year, and, uh, came home from college early this year because of COVID-19. Corona. We were trying to figure out live stream. Did CJ have any experience with that? No. Did he jump right in and figure it out? Yeah. And I got to tell you, I, I think it was Easter Sunday. We had we had five people in the church, but we had like 40 households watching online. Oh wow. Okay. Couldn't have done it without without help. Couldn't have done it without help. You understand? There's no preacher that is an island unto himself. That's right. There need to be laborers who will assist in the work of God, who will help in the work of God, who will be a blessing in the work of God. Laborers together. Laborers together in what? Evangelizing the lost. Okay. Taking care of those who are hurting and troubled. There's all sorts of things to be done if we would just, if people would just understand God has given them a purpose and they ought to enlist in the work of God. If you don't enlist in the work of God, you don't have purpose for God. Lots of people come to our churches and they'll be great. They'll sit in the pews. And then after a while they get sour and leave. Why? Because they're not involved, they're not giving back anything. Let's enlist them. Let's get them doing something. Let's get them excited. By the way, let's make them feel their job is important. Well, Pastor, all I do is arrange the hymnals in the auditorium. Great! Everybody can find them next week. Perfect! That's a big job! That's a great job! Let's enlist the unenlisted. There's always something to be done around the church. So if, you, if you've got somebody in your church who's not doing something, hey, would you help me with this? I could use a hand in the next week. Could you do that for me? Because I'm not going to be available. And the next week, they can do it on their own. Enlist the unenlisted. Give them a purpose. 
Give them a job. Evangelize the lost, enlighten the converts, encourage the trouble, uh, troubled, enlist the unenlisted, and wait. We then we need to encompass with care. Encompass with care. Verse 32 says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. And then skipping down to verse 36, it says, And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. Over the years, as I've done ministry, for a long time I traded computer work for Bible college credit. So I have an earned doctorate. That and a nick, that and a dollar will get me a cup of coffee at Cumberland Farm. <laughs> okay? I, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Okay? We need to encompass, we need to go round about, people need to know that we care. How many times in scripture do we see that Jesus had compassion on the multitude? Jesus had compassion on the lost. <clears throat> when Jesus came across Bartimaeus, the Bible says Jesus had compassion on him. You understand, if we are not showing people we love them, if we are not showing people that we care, if we are, if we are not examples of compassion, we lose the opportunity to share with them where we got that care, where we got that compassion, where we got that love. We lose the opportunity because we have not shown them, we have not encompassed them with care. We've got to let the world know it's not about being self-serving, it's about being God-serving, and it's about lifting up the Lord, and the Lord will build you. The Lord loves you, and we will be vehicles, conduits of His love. If we're not willing to be a conduit of His love, we are not fully embracing the love that Christ has for us. Why? We cannot be, we, listen, if, 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 if we're, if we're going to let Christ love on us the way Christ loves us, the way that Christ wants to love on us, our cup's going to be overflowing. We're going to have to pass it out somewhere. We ought to encompass people with care. They ought to know that we love them. They ought to know that there's a concern for them. They ought to know that there's somebody who wants to build them up. And with that in mind, we are to entrust with responsibility. We are to entrust with responsibility. Verse 28 says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock of God, over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. You understand church is a building place? We go to church to get built up. And in the process of getting built up, we have a responsibility to build up others. I don't want people to come to church because, oh, I'm just such a wonderful preacher. I don't want people to come to church for that reason. I want people to come to church because they know that God loves them. Amen. I want people to come to church because they know that they'll find people who care about them. I want people who come to, come to church because they know that somebody is going to take responsibility for their souls. Somebody's going, to, somebody's going to be there to take them under the wing and say, Here, let me help you. Let me be a blessing to you. Let me be an encouragement to you. Let me be a builder for you. And we need to take the responsibility to be that person in our church who will say, I will help build you. I will be with you. I will care for you. I will pray for you. I will encourage you. I want to be there. It is a responsibility. And listen, wait. The pastor can feed the flock of God from the pulpit, but you inside your church, you have circles of influence, and you can feed people within your circle of influence within your church. 
people might relate to you better than re they relate to the preacher. Amen. And they'll listen to the preacher and they will respect the preacher and they will honor the preacher. But a word from you can make a difference in life that the preacher wouldn't have a chance to do. Every one of us has a responsibility regarding building each other, encouraging each other, feeding each other within the confines of the local church. It's a responsibility. And by the way, we ought to take it seriously. And when we take it seriously, it means we're going to be there when the church is open. It means that if we don't go, we miss an opportunity not only to receive a blessing, but we may be missing an opportunity that God gives us to be a blessing. Right. It's a responsibility. So we're to evangelize the lost, enlighten our converts, encourage the troubled, enlist the unenlisted, encompass with care, and trust with responsibility, and then wait. Last of all, we are to evaluate our progress. Verse 30 says, um, yeah, verse 30. Verse 30 says, also of your own shelves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn every one of you day and night with tears. Folks, the Church of Christ was bought with his blood. Every once in a while, we need to take stock and say, are we truly following the course that God has set for us? Are we truly still doing those things which God has called us to do? Or has somebody come in who's gotten us off track? <coughs> we ought not to turn to the right or to the left. We ought to stay focused on the things that Christ would have us stay focused on. We ought to be single-minded. We ought to be Christ-centered. And we ought to uh, determine that, listen, we've got a vision that God has given us. We need to stick to that vision. And every once in a while, we need to take a step back and say, are we still going in the direction that God set us on? Or have we gone to the right or to the left? Have we broken away a little bit? What do we need to do to get back to being Christ-centered. What do we need to do to get back to being single-focused? What do we need to do to come back from that right hand or to the left hand and get back on that way that God would have our church to go? We, I've seen too many churches that get so wrapped up in this and so wrapped up in that. Before you know it, they've lost their focus as a church on what God would have them to do. We can't do that. Christ bought our church with his own blood. We need, to, we need to just check ourselves once in a while. And by the way, that's true for us as individual Christians. Mm. doesn't hurt for me to do a self-check with the guy I see in the mirror every morning when I get ready for my day. Amen. Okay? And then we need as a church, we need to make sure we're doing church checks to evaluate where we're at and make sure that we are still going in the direction that God would have our church to go. Listen, if we don't let... There are so many buildings out there today that have the name so-and-so church on the door. And I don't care what so-and-so is. The point is, if you were to compare them to what God says in the Bible that a church is, you would find that they have no right to have the name church on the door. Because they're not doing anything that God calls a church. They're social clubs. They're, they're, they're a ritualistic religion. But they're certainly not churches in the Bible sense of the church. The church of God was bought with the shed blood of Jesus Christ. We ought to stay true to the word of God. We ought to stay true to the work of God. And we ought to stay true to the will of God. Listen, if we don't determine in our hearts that we are going to stay focused and do the work of the church, eventually we're going to have a nation without any real churches in it. We can 
cannot afford to do that, folks. We just can't. So as we're here this afternoon, let me tell you, I love the fellowship. And stay until Tony and Marilyn throw you out, okay? <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, leave us not to forget, really, coming out of this whole COVID-19, stay at home, you can't have church, we cannot, cannot, cannot forsake the work of the church. Father, we love you. We're thankful for your grace. Thankful for just a few minutes we've had here. We love you, Lord. We're thankful for your grace. Lord, we pray that you bless us and help us to take to remembrance every one of us here is involved in the work of the church. We ought not to take it lightly, but we ought to take it with the responsibility it deserves. We ought to take it because God purchased the church with his own blood. We ought to take it because it is the will of God for our lives. So, Lord, we pray now as we uh, as we continue in our fellowship and dismiss the servants that you would help us in our hearts that we would rethink and take seriously the work of the church because without the work of the church, there's no hope for our towns. There's no hope for our nation. We love you, Lord. We're thankful for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening.